I'm afraid to tell you, like with any muscle, it's all just about exercise and repetition. <laughs> Hello, my name is Amy Naylor. Welcome back to another handpan tutorial. Today we are exploring ways that we can strengthen our non-dominant hand. Um, so for this video, I'm just going to show you a bunch of examples. I'll give you a load of links in the description to um, some of the uh, techniques and drills and exercises that I'll be discussing. Here's what I do when I'm practicing um, my, in my case, my left hand. So I might come up with a little groove, for instance, the very simple groove that we explored in a few videos back. This is just our simple 4B groove. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, mm, bat, yeah. If you want to learn how to build this one up, Check out the link in the description. And literally, I just flip it and practice it the other way around. So this is leading with my left now. Now hopefully, if you have watched that previous video, you've already done that because I asked you to do that in the video. But um, if not, now is your opportunity. Um, what I also like to do is combine the two things just to make it a little bit more exciting. So the main thing that I tend to do in my practice in getting my right and left hand to um, balance each other out is to consistently and constantly swap over. So I might start with a right lead, do it twice, swap. tuning in to like how different it feels when I do it the other way around, how different it sounds when I do the other, round, other way around. Typically when I'm leading with my non-dominant hand, um, everything just tends to it just doesn't sit quite as comfortably like the it might not be noticeable you might not be able to understand exactly why it is but perhaps the timing is just ever so slightly out or you know or the dynamic if you like if the control of the tone that you're creating is just not quite as strong um, so all those tiny little intricate things make it just sound a little bit off but you can't work out why um, and so that's what I really like to tune into and really listen to when I'm doing that consistent swapping over. So with that in mind here are a few other exercises from our repertoire um, that we can use for inspiration to practice with our non-dominant hand. The most obvious one would be the paradiddle exercise. Because that's exactly it. That is exactly the consistent swapping of leading with the right and leading with the right. <laughs> leading with the right and leading with the left is what I mean to say. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left right. You're like constantly swapping. Um, but what you can do is you can lengthen that to para paradiddle. Para paradiddle, para paradiddle. So each hand gets a little bit more time to lead that activity. I'll link below um, paradiddle and paradiddle variation exercises that you can use. That's a really, really good one for strengthening your left hand or your non-dominant hand. Another really good one is what has become known as the pancake drill, um, for anybody who comes to my classes <laughs> will know, um, which is the practicing right, 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 left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, 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 right, left, right, left, right, left. I like pancakes, maple syrup is the best. I like pancakes, maple syrup is the best. Again, you are practicing leading with the right, leading with the left. And with any of these things, don't just keep it all here in the center tone. Have an explore, move around, and that movement is what's going to really challenge that non-dominant hand. So for instance... Right, 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 right. that one um, so I invite you to be creative with it and explore and see what you can find that's different to what I can find. Another really good one is just as simple as and I always forget this in my own personal practice so it's a really good one for me to reiterate so I can <laughs> take a leaf out of my own book which is practicing scales one hand at a time. Super simple because it's this 
this motion that takes all the control. And when you're playing, really think about how you can get the most consistent tone out of what you're doing. It's particularly difficult. that up but keep the dynamic low the volume low and use your non-dominant hand and suddenly it's a real challenge <laughs> see they could easily do that so much quieter but you know it's difficult you gotta practice these things so so far we've got coming up with a nice groove practicing it the other way around getting into that habit, swapping over consistently. Yeah, um, practicing your I like pancakes, Maple syrup is the best. I like pancakes. Maple syrup is the best. I like pancakes. Maple syrup is the best. I like pancakes. Maple syrup is the best. Um, <laughs> practicing your paradiddles. find melodies or grooves that are really exciting for me to play and that sound really awesome but that require a shift in the lead hand for me to be able to achieve it right so perhaps there'll be a lot of things going on on this side of the pan and then a lot of things going on on this side of the pan and in order to access the other side I have to change which hand is holding the beat right so for instance two chords interacting with each other but there's no way I can do it oh I suppose I could I could do it that way but it's kind of awkward so forcing yourself to find the most comfortable position for your body sometimes means that you have to change which hand is leading which is perfect practice and to bring it back to my golden rule play over practice once you've had a little go at some of these exercises once you're getting a bit more confident with it just play and just like I say be creative make yourself you know, come up with different exciting things that force your other hand to do things that it's not used to doing. Um, like in the last video I did, that random groove generator. I made that video because I was bored and I wanted, I wanted something new, I wanted to find something new and exciting. And I didn't have the creative capacity that day to think of something myself. So I randomly generated some numbers and there we go, we had a fun groove and you know, I could have spent half of that video practicing with the other hand, but that would have been a really boring video. But <laughs> that's the kind of thing that you can be doing. So there is no quick fix. There is no simple, this will make your other hand be amazing. It's not how it works. You have to exercise that muscle and you have to keep at it, but it doesn't have to be boring. It can be creative and it can be fun. And I'm excited for you as you go on that journey in strengthening both of those hands. Um, because the hand pan is perfect for that. It's just perfect for it. It's evenly balanced. It encourages both of your hands to, you know, get involved. Um, so don't miss the opportunity. Run with it. Explore with it and have fun with it. Cool. I'll see you next time.